Okay, so we've made progress on the Speedy Scandic with the new heavy duty bumper. Here's the bumper here. It goes around the front. We have these all these connectors that we screwed in place. The important part is this here. And this is where a receiver hitch will go for the winch or a tow bar or whatever you need up here. Mainly the winch, the electric winch that we will put here. Pull ourselves out or pull other people out when they get stuck. So we have one final piece to put in place for this install. And that is a screw right here. So there's no hole here. So we have to screw very carefully a hole through here through the plastic. And then on the other side of this, we can put a screw with a nut. Okay, so now we're going to install this bolt and nut to this side, drilling through here. So we got lucky and went straight through the first time. It's clear on the back, there's just a bracket. The challenge for me has been to get this bolt, getting the nut to the back of it very tight. And I'm not sure if I have what it takes to get in there and put this nut where it goes. Very difficult spot. Oh, I feel it. And I think we got it, folks. First try. We're gonna go ahead and hand tight this. So what we've done here is install this bolt. And I'll do my best to show you back here. We have to go back here around this and hold that nut in place, put this bolt. But it's done, and so that's really great news. So what we have is the bumper is held on there, put across, there are some bolts under here, bolt and nuts here, and around the other side. So we'll go ahead and put this back together. So the next step will be to install the electric winch. So we've been working on electric winch for the ski do Scandic. This is a 2017 model Ski-Doo Scandic wide track, which is a 20 inch track, 600 E-Tech. That means it's a 600 two-stroke motor. Rotax is the brand of the motor made for Ski-Doo and it's a very high quality, highly reputable motor. But today, this is about the bumper that we've just finished up and installing the winch. And as you can see, we finished the bumper. So we installed this bumper all the way around and the more challenging parts were getting to these bolts that are under here and over there and putting this together correctly. It took quite a while to do it, but we're ready to install the winch. So what I've done so far, I've been able to connect the winch cables to the existing battery system and I'm quite pleased with the result. Now I've put it on a bungee cord just to hold it in place until I get the proper alignment set up for it. This is a winch I had for another project and it requires a receiver hitch just like this that mounts on and bolts on. This is a Warren Pro Vantage 3000. I believe ski -Doo sells a winch similar to this at the 2500 range so this is very similar to what you might buy from ski -Doo. and we just had this laying around at the homestead so I figured it'd be good to do this project. So what we've done is we've wired it and so this winch fits in here. The receiver hitch is now here thanks to the new front bumper. It slides in like that and then there's a pin that slips in that locks it in place. The winch will get power through this connector. The ski battery is here under a compartment and I've wired the positive and negative cables to that battery. This solenoid for the winch controls power between the winch controller and the winch power. By the way, we're still in the process of putting all this in place. So this will eventually be bolted down into this compartment. I've left it open so you can see what I'm doing here. This solenoid will be bolted and hidden into this compartment, tucked away. And this is the connector for the controller. So the controller will live in this compartment already connected. There's no reason to disconnect it. So when we want to use the winch, the process looks like this. We're stuck, oh my goodness. We've opened the compartment, pull off the winch cable, pull off the controller, connect the winch cable. And now your winch is ready to use with this controller and you can step away from the machine for safety reasons. If that rope on that winch ever snaps, it could come flying back at you. So the safest way to use it is not have a controller up on the handlebars where you have to sit in line with the winch and you become basically a target if something breaks, you can step away from the machine. And as you can hear and see, the winch turns back and forth. And that's how the winch system will work. And I'm quite pleased with this situation. So to tuck it all back away, let's assume we've pulled ourselves out or we've pulled a buddy out or we've winched out a fallen tree that we're cutting up for firewood. Now we're ready to stow it all away. Again, the solenoid is tucked away. So this cable rolls up nicely and it tucks away. And then we can disconnect this winch cable. And eventually I think what I will do is put some sort of a tie wrap on this that I can take on and off quite easily, or even maybe in a sack or some kind of bag to tie up. But it floats down into this compartment. So in this compartment, we have the winch power cable, the winch controller, and the solenoid, which I have not bolted down yet. This is the solenoid it will tuck back into place somewhere in here. This is the plug-in for the control cable, which I will also attach somewhere in here. This is the battery box where we've cut two holes for the power to come out of the battery box and to the winch power. So this is how this works. It goes in here and we tuck it away. And then this compartment shuts. 
close-ups of the install. Two bolts here around. This is a connector here, two bolts here, two more bolts here. One of these had to be drilled out that's required by Ski-Doo when this Ski-Doo heavy-duty bumper for the Scandic is provided. You're required by the instructions to drill into your plastic and put that bolt in there with a nut on the back. Another bolt there, another compartment here where it connects. And then the winch. So the winch slides out like that. So we have two choices with this winch. We can either leave this winch connected at the front, which I choose not to do. It's quite heavy and I don't want to hit anything with it. So eventually we will have a holder for this winch. That bracket will bolt right here, probably on the other side because this is here. But then this slips in and locks into place with a pin that, and the winch will ride right there. So whenever you're ready to use it, you just step off the machine, pull the pin, pull it out reconnect it. I hope you found this valuable. It was certainly valuable for me. I had to buy nothing for this install. Everything I had already from previous projects, so I was really thrilled to be able to use everything we had. It just shows you how sometimes saving a few spare parts and not discarding things, especially in a place like Alaska, can really help you out. So the next step in the process of setting up this winch to use on the Ski-Doo Scandic is to install the winch cable hook and then as you can see this winch cable is used but in still good shape but it's not wound very well so what we have to do is install this winch cable install this bumper which protects the cable from going too far in and then we'll pull this winch cable all the way out connect it and then pull the winch cable all the way back in with some tension as we wind it correctly onto the spool so the first step in that process is to attach this winch hook to this winch cable these are all pieces and parts to some other projects that I had finished in the recent past and I had extra parts. This came off of a machine that I no longer needed and no longer used and so I had adapted it to this machine and it's going to be of great value. This little piece here is to protect this cable from going around this pin because these cables under tension like to snap. So we will tie a knot in this, tie it tight, and then we'll attach this bumper. So I am terrible at tying knots. I've always wanted to learn and I've never really done it very well. So if anyone in, out there knows how to tie a good knot, please put it in the comments. Let me know the correct way to tie a knot in this situation. So what we have here looks like this and whatever you do, you don't want this knot coming loose. Be sure whatever you do, put the correct kind of knot in it. So then we put this bumper on. The bumper will fit up against here and it will protect. As you can see what happens here when you don't use a bumper, things get scarred up like this. And that's exactly what happened here. This winch cable pulled this in too tight and it banged on here. So if we have this in place, it will protect things. So these screws go in here and they screw in and then there's a nut on the back end. And so we'll get this done and then we're gonna install this and I'll show you the next step of winding out this winch and then installing this rope properly. See you soon. Okay, so what we've done is we've got the winch cable all the way out and you can see it's tight. And I hooked it to the front of my truck. What we're going to do, putting the ski scanning in neutral, we're going to connect the winch and then we're going to turn the winch on and winch that cable in. And what that will do is as I'm winching it in, I will guide it back and forth here and it will properly wind up this cable nice and tight. So let's get started. For now we have to connect the winch, winch power cable. And by the way guys, do me a favor, in the modern age, we have something called spell check. Know how to spell winch. The correct way to spell winch, as in electric winch, is W-I-N-C-H. Never and not W-E-N-C-H. Know the difference. There's no excuse in the age of spell check and modern computers and AI. There's no excuse for someone misspelling the word winch. Uh, okay, that's the old college professor coming out at me and being upset about lazy. Just lazy. Uh, it's, it's not ignorant. It's not dumb. It's just lazy. By the way, the winch, W-E-N-C-H, is something very different. Don't confuse the two. <laughs> if you know what W-E-N-C-H is, put it in the comments below. I think uh, those of you who are married, your wives won't appreciate that. All right, we've connected the power to the winch. I made these cords extra long on purpose, just in case I ever had to move that tool somewhere else and I can power it from my machine. Okay, let's get started. Uh -oh. I think I need to go forward a little bit. So one thing to remember, if your winch is in free spool, turn it back into the lock position so the gears can grab and turn the winch forward. So the way a winch works is it grips by having some on the spool already. So what I'm gonna do is pull this machine up, get some slack, and we'll go ahead and spool it a couple times softly so it will have something to grab on. Otherwise, you'll break the cable and the knot that it comes through right here. What I want to do is make sure that rope goes back and forth in an even line back and forth where the rope is spooled up on this thing evenly and cleanly so there's no knots and no bumps in it. 
And as you can see, as I turn the steering wheel, the nose of this machine goes left and right a little bit, and that's distributing the rope back and forth, and it's working very well. So when we moved in to this property, found this old sled on the property. It appears to be fiberglass, very weathered, rusted. It was essentially growing on the side of a tree, <laughs> or the tree was growing on the side of it and into it. It had a bolt stuck in here. So we took that bolt out and I will use this and we will connect it to the Ski-Doo Scandic to harvest some firewood today. So essentially what happens is you can throw your chainsaw in here and strap it down or you can put the chainsaw on the back of the Scandic, cut rounds of firewood that fit in here and then strap them down and haul them back home. And in this case, back to camp. But that's what we're doing today. We're gonna test out this old sled. By the way, if anybody knows what kind of sled this is, there's a special name for this type of sled. And I cannot remember the name of it. I came across it once in an obscure article and I cannot remember. So if anybody knows, please leave it in the comments. You know, it's long and skinny and it's got this heavy metal connector here on a pivot so I don't believe it's used as a dog sled it's too heavy for that this is a work sled for behind something like a snow machine at one time it was probably a premier product but I cannot even guess how old this thing is so again if you guys know what this is please leave it in the comments let me know I'd love to know thank you very much okay let's go get firewood what we have here is large spruce tree that fell during some heavy wind and it's already dead because it's spruce beetle kill and I've already cut this up and I showed in a previous video how we used the electric chainsaw to cut this up so skiers could pass through here that were staying with us so now we're back to harvest this for firewood so we have the scandic and we have this sled we found on the property right now it's full of snow the plan is to cut this into chunks and then put it in the sled and strap it down and haul it home and so what happened here is the track kicks up snow and it filled the sled with snow and I'm not sure how to avoid that so this is the old sled we found on the property obviously we have a lot of work due to this thing to improve it but if it works today then we'll put the effort into rebuilding the fiberglass rebuilding this and we'll use it so we have several chainsaws and makes and models and sizes this is a Husqvarna and I like it because for its size it's very powerful this is the only Husqvarna chainsaw I have the rest are steel. This is the Husqvarna 543 XP. You know, they consider this a professional level saw and it's an excellent saw for the power to weight ratio. It has a place for spark plug wrench, oil and other things that can fit in there. So it's one of the box. So we're gonna go ahead and cut up this tree. Normally we'd wear ear muffs and a face shield to do this. We're definitely gonna wear gloves and eye protection. Safety is important, especially in the back country of Alaska. This is not a place where you want to take shortcuts on your safety, especially when running a chainsaw. All right, let's get the cut. saw needs to be sharpened. You can see that's too much fine dust in there. All the flakes should be as big as those big chunks. This will make excellent firewood. It's not too rotten, but it's been dead for a while and standing, so it's dry. I'm very excited to have it. We're gonna cut this one, and we'll do our best to keep our saw blade out of the snow. You don't want that blade sucking up that snow and sending it into the engine. split very easily with the splitting ball and the axe. It's gonna burn. 
good. So we're cutting them this length because this is about the perfect length, about 16 inches to fit in our Blaze King wood stove. When we chop them and split them, you have chunks that are perfect size for that. So now we're gonna get to this one and we'll cut as much as we can without getting buried in the snow. And then if we want more, we'll use the winch on the Scandic and winch that thing back this way. <laughs> After sitting inside all winter, the simple task of running a chainsaw gets your blood pumping and that's good. We're out of shape. Not bad. I don't really want to step in there. It's going to go up to my boots and maybe into my boots. Maybe use the Scandic to drag that piece of wood out a little bit more. No one left behind. You want to go down, turn around? I suppose I should try to turn around and come back. We'll see if that works. Be right back. Right there should do it. What we're gonna do is pull out the winch and see if we can winch that tree back towards us. That one's so far buried in the snow, maybe we'll do this in instead. The correct way to winch things is not to wrap your winch cable around the item because that can cut your cable. So this tow strap will protect our winch cable. Two loops together and slip them into the hook. Okay. This is our power cable for the winch, a useful tool for this useful machine. I'm starting and stopping the winch because the winch could overheat if you just constantly run it. It's a very heavy tree and we're pulling against a bunch of other trees in there. Broke. This happens. <laughs> yep. Too much pushing against those trees right there. Too much force and it's an old rope as you can see the witch cables. Well, that's disappointing but it's okay we're this is the way we test things or how we learn. We can come back. And we can come back for more. Thank you so much for watching as we hunt, we harvest, we homestead, and we adventure our way through the last frontier. Please like, subscribe, and share our videos because we have so much more to share with you as we show you what it means when we say we are living my Alaska. See you next time.